this lesson, we're going to learn about neurotransmitters. We're going to cover the classification of neurotransmitters as well as the types and functions of neurotransmitters. This video has timestamps, so if you're looking for a particular section, you can go ahead and click on the timestamp. Definition of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers in the body. Their job is to transmit signals from nerve cells to target cells. Communication between two neurons happens in the synaptic cleft. And that is the small gap between the synapses of neurons. Here, electric signals that have traveled along the axon are briefly converted into chemical ones through the release of neurotransmitters, causing a specific response in the receiving neutron. A neurotransmitter influences a neuron in one of three ways, either by exciting, inhibiting, or modulating. Now, this leads us to the classification of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters can be classified by their function into three, and this is based on the influence of a neurotransmitter on a neuron. So, just as we said before, we have excitatory neurotransmitters, we have inhibitory neurotransmitters, and then we have modulatory neurotransmitters. Excitatory neurotransmitters are the types of neurotransmitters that have excitatory effects. This means that they increase the likelihood that a neuron will fire an action potential. So basically, they encourage a target cell to take action. Some of the major examples of neurotransmitters include epinephrine and norepinephrine. Inhibitory neurotransmitters. These types of neurotransmitters have inhibitory effects on the neuron. This means that they decrease the likelihood that the neuron will fire an action potential. So basically, they decrease the chances of a target cell taking any action. Some examples include serotonin and GABA or gamma-aminobutyric acid. Then lastly, we have modulatory neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters are often referred to as neuromodulators and are capable of affecting a large number of neurons at the same time. They also influence the effects of other chemical messengers. Now that we have learned about the classification of neurotransmitters, we're going to learn about the types and the functions of neurotransmitters. Now, when we mention a neurotransmitter, a type of neurotransmitter, we're going to learn about the functional class, we're going to learn about the location, we're going to learn about the functions, and then we're going to learn about the symptoms of lack or excess. So there are a number of different ways to classify and categorize neurotransmitters. The most common way is to divide them up by their molecular structure into amino acids, peptides, and monoamines, and others. In this video, we're going to classify them into six groups. This includes the amino acids, the peptides, the monoamines, the purines, the gasotransmitters, and then the acetylcholine. So, amino acids. On the amino acids, we have gamma aminobutyric acid, also known as GABA, and we have glutamate. Let's talk about GABA. For the functional class of GABA, it is an inhibitory chemical messenger. The location, the brain region, specifically the hippocampus, the thalamus, the basal ganglia, the hypothalamus, and the brain stem. For the functions, its main functions are to regulate anxiety, vision, and motor control. Symptoms of lack or excess. A lack of GABA can cause poor impulse control. It can also cause brain seizures as well as bipolar disorder and mania. If there is too much GABA, however, this can result in hypersomnia, also known as oversleeping, and cause a lack of energy. Glutamate. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. It is found in the central nervous system in the neurons and the glia. For its functions, it supports cognitive functions such as memory formation and learning.
symptoms of lack or excess. If there is an excess amount of glutamate, this could result in excitotoxicity, meaning that neurons are killed due to overactivations of glutamate receptors. This could lead to conditions such as Alzheimer's disease, stroke, and epilepsy. If there is not enough glutamate, this could result in psychosis, insomnia, concentration problems, mental exhaustion, or even death. Peptides Under peptides, we are going to talk about oxytocin and endorphins. Oxytocin an Oxytocin is an excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitter. This powerful hormone acts as a neurotransmitter in the brain. It is produced by the hypothalamus. For its functions, it plays a role in social recognition, bonding, and sexual reproduction. Synthetic oxytocin, such as pitocin, is often used as an aid in labor and delivery. Both oxytocin and pitocin cause the uterus to contract during labor. Endorphins Endorphins are classified as inhibitory neurotransmitters. Endorphins are primarily made within the hypothalamus and pituitary glands. For its functions, it works in lowering the transmission of pain signals to the brain and promotes the feelings of euphoria. Symptoms of lack or excess Although there is not too many known symptoms of excess in endorphins, an excess of endorphin can lead to addiction, to addiction to exercise. If there is a deficit in endorphins, this could result in the feelings of depression, headaches, anxiety, mood swings, and a condition called fibromyalgia, also known as chronic pain. Monoamines. Under monoamines, we are going to learn about epinephrine, norepinephrine, histamine, dopamine, and serotonin. Epinephrine. Epinephrine is classified as an excitatory neurotransmitter. It is located in the adrenal gland. Epinephrine is also known as adrenaline. Epinephrine is considered both a hormone and a neurotransmitter. Generally, epinephrine is a stress hormone that is released by the adrenal system. Symptoms of lack or excess. If there is too much adrenaline in the bloodstream, this could lead to high blood pressure, anxiety, insomnia, and an increased risk of stroke. If there is too little adrenaline, however, this could lead to a diminished excitement and not being able to react appropriately to stressful situations. Norepinephrine Norepinephrine is also known as noradrenaline. It is also classified as an excitatory neurotransmitter. It is also produced in the adrenal glands as well as within the brain stem and the hypothalamus. The functions include it stimulates the brain and the body. It helps in activating the body and brain to take actions during the time of stress or when in a dangerous situation. It is especially prevalent during the fight or flight response, aiding in alertness. No adrenaline is at its peak during the times of stress, but lowest during sleep cycles. Symptoms of lack or excess. If levels of no adrenaline are too high, this can lead to high blood pressure, excessive sweating, and anxiety. Low levels of no adrenaline could mean that the energy levels are low, concentration is lacking, could also contribute to the feelings of depression. Histamine. Histamine is classified as an excitatory neurotransmitter located in the brain and the spinal cord. It plays a role in allergic reactions and it is produced as a part of the immune system response to pathogens. Dopamine. Dopamine is commonly known as the feel-good neurotransmitter. It is both an excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitter as well as a neuromodulator. Dopamine is involved in reward, motivation, and can also cause addictions. Symptoms of lack or excess. A deficiency in dopamine could result in the feelings of depression, 
And since this also plays a role in coordination of body movements, a shortage can cause tremors and motor impairment as seen in people with Parkinson's disease. Serotonin. For its functions, serotonin plays an important role in regulating and modulating mood, sleep, anxiety, sexuality, and appetite. Symptoms of lack or excess. Lack of serotonin can lead to depression, anxiety, panic disorder, and panic attacks. Under serotonin, we're going to discuss SSRIs, that is, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And these are a type of antidepressant medication commonly prescribed to treat depression, anxiety, panic disorders, and panic attacks. SSRIs work to balance serotonin levels by blocking the reuptake of serotonin in the brain, which can help improve mood and reduce feelings of anxiety. Purines. Other purines are going to talk about adenosine and adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine is classified as a neuromodulator. It is located in the brain. Adenosine is commonly found in the presynaptic regions of the hippocampus. For its functions, it is involved in suppressing arousal and improving sleep. It also acts as a central nervous system depressant. Symptoms of lack or excess. Consistently high levels of this neurotransmitter can cause hypersensitivity to touch and heat. If there is too little adenosine, this can cause anxiety and trouble sleeping. Adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This is considered to be the energy currency of life. ATP acts as a neurotransmitter in the central and peripheral nervous system. It plays a role in autonomic control, sensory transduction, and communication with the glial cells. Gasotransmitters. Under gasotransmitters, we have, we have nitric oxide and carbon monoxide. Nitric oxide. This compound plays a role in affecting smooth muscles, relaxing them to allow blood vessels to dilate and increase blood flow to certain areas of the body. Carbon monoxide. This colorless, odorless gas can have toxic and potentially fatal effects when people are exposed to high levels of the substance. However, it is also produced naturally by the body, where it acts as a neurotransmitter that helps modulate the body's inflammatory response. Finally, we're going to talk about acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is found in both the central nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The main function is focused on muscle movements, memory, and learning associated with motor neurons. Too much acetylcholine is linked with increased salivation, muscle weakening, blood vision, and paralysis. Too little acetylcholine is linked to learning and memory impairments. If you found this video helpful, support this channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing.